بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد We should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these last few moments Allah has given us tawfiq to fast in this Mubarak month Whatever a'mal we did we should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Maulana Yusuf rahmatullahi wa say Faqaliluna kathir The little that we are doing whether it's one tasbih whether it is two rakats of salat whether it's a tilawat of Quran Never ever think any amal of deen to be insignificant. Wallahu shakirun la in shakartum la azidannakum. Allah is grateful. The more grateful we are, and we show Allah this gratitude, Allah will give us tawfiq to increase it. But we should not have pride and arrogance and be overwhelmed by our amal. He used to say, وَكَثِيرُنَا قَلِيلٌ But the lot that we're doing is little but it is insignificant. If we compare our amal, no matter how much we excel, compared to the sacrifice given by Sahaba radiallahu anhum, then it is small. So on the day of Eid, it's a day of celebration, but who should celebrate the day of Eid? Eid is actually a day where one celebrates finding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one that found Allah in this Mubarak ayyam, he is eligible to celebrate Eid. When we give Eid to the children, we give Eid to the ones that are obedient. Otherwise, the children that are not listening will give them a smaller ED. The ones that listen all the time will give them a big ED. So Allah is saying, this is the night. خَمْسُ لَيَال لَا يُرَدُّ فِيهِنَّ الدُّعَى Two nights of the year, du'as are definitely accepted. And there's another three occasions. The two are the two nights of Eid. You made sacrifices. Now this is the night of ED. Allah is ready to give us ED. And like how in an exam room when you make mistakes, the teacher says, okay, just forget those mistakes. I'll still give you full marks. Why? Because out of 100, you got 99 and a half. That half, I'm willing to overlook it and give you 100. Sometimes the teacher gives a student 105, even though the paper's out of 100. Because that student is a special student. Like that we give a sadaqah, tuhratan lissa'im. It's a means of purification for a fasting person. And he love from all types of flaws and negligence and errors. Man addaha qabla salati fa zakatun. And if you do it before the salat, then it's a means of cleansing. Maqbula, sign that your fast amala accepted. Woman addaha ba'd as salat fa iya sadaqatun min as sadaqat. You do it afterwards, means you're not taking this seriously. It's just another sadaqah from amongst the sadaqah that a person gives. Man qama laylatay al-eidayni. It is a night to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lam yamut qalbuhu hina tamutu al-quloob. When hearts will die, on that day his heart will not be dead. This month of Ramadan is not a month of dead hearts. It was an opportunity where we give this heart life. That person who gave his heart life in these Mubarak ayyam, then on the night of Eid, we will see that heart alive. Imam Shafi used to say that I seen great mashayikh min khiyari ahli al-Madina from the chosen servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yadharuna ala masjid al-Nabi laylat al-Eidain on the ayyam and the nights of Eid specifically they used to come to the masajid wa yadhkuruna Allah hatta tadhhaba sa'atum min al-layl until the night ended, they were crying and humbling themselves in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the night is a night of gifts from Allah. Let us collect our Eid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the day of Eid is a day of lessons as well for those who have found Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Ghazwan, once he went to the Eidya, وَنَذَرَ إِلَى النَّاسِ فِي يَوْمِ الْعِيدِ يُزَاحِمُ بَعْضُهُمْ بَعْضًا 
he seen the crowds. Babaka, he fell in tears. He said, Ma ra'ay tu shay'an ashbah bi wuquf al qiyamati min hadha al yawm. I've not seen anything closer in resemblance to Judgment Day. He fell in tears after his Salat. He said when he returned home, Raja'a maridhan. He was ill. He was sick. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said, Dakhaltu ala Umar ibn al-Khattab. I went to visit Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu on Yawm al-Eid, on the day of Eid. Can we understand, and I'm not going to get into the fadail and the malaqib of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. Waqad aghlaq al-Bab. He had locked the door. Wahuwa yabaki. I could hear him crying profusely. I knocked on the door. I took permission. I entered. Faqultu, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, atabki wa nasu fi farahin. Are you in tears while everybody else out there is in elation and celebration? Faqala Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu said, Lahu alim al-farihoon ma farihu. If the people outside knew and had a reason to laugh and tell them to continue laughing and celebrate. Then he started crying and he said, If they are amongst those whose amal has been accepted, then they have a license to be happy and rejoice. وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنَ الْمَتْرُودِينَ فَلْيَبْكُوا And if their amal were rejected, then they should be in tears. As for me, I cannot vouch for people. فَإِنِّي لَا أَدْرِي I don't know مِنَ الْمَقْبُولِينَ أَنَا أَمْ مِنَ الْمَتْرُودِينَ I don't know. I've got no guarantee whether my amal were accepted or my amal were rejected. We need to make a fiesla with Allah. We need to have a conversation with Allah. We came into this world crying. Let us make such an, an effort that when we pass in away and when we live in this world, we are laughing and everybody else are around us are crying. They are in tears. Ramadan is a month of change. Ramadan is a month of revolution. Ramadan is a month of resolution where we make a fiesla between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every amr of Allah should not be broken. I will give priority to my Allah. Every sunnah is important. I will give priority to my Nabi. Every sunnah that we bring in our life is life. It will give us life. It will give us happiness. It will give us peace. It will give us all the solution to all the problems. And every sunnah leaving our lives is a dead body. Put one dead body in a house. Now leave a hundred sunnahs. Leave a thousand sunnahs. We've got a thousand corpses. The stench has gone so bad that we cannot even live in that house. Those people who have left deen, who have landed, left the sunnah of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The dunya has become stenched. And our lives have become difficult. There's only one solution. Find my Allah. Find my Nabi. Fudail bin Ayaz just say, Adrakna nas wa hum yura'oon bima ya'maluna. I found there were a lot of people did the amal for show, for formality, because it was a certain time, place or situation. The result was sorrow al-an yura'oon bima la ya'maloon. Now they just do things for show and don't do any amal. They don't do any amal. They are void of deen. As Hassan Basri used to say, دُخُولُ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ وَأَهْلِ النَّارِ فِي مَا فِيهِ مَا يَكُونُ بِالْعَمَالِ People will go into Jannah and Jahannam because of their amal. But remember, خُلُودُهُمْ فِيهِ مَا يَكُونُ بِالْنِيَاتِ the decision whether they'll be eternally in Jannah or Jahannam is based on this heart. If you want to be immortal in Akhirah, if you want Jannah forever, sort this heart out. Get the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Fadail bin Ayaz used to say, إِذَا كَانَ 
yus'alu when the sadiqin those people who have proved the genuineness in front of Allah the stalwarts the warriors مثل إسماعيل وعيسى great great أنبياء عليهم الصلاة والسلام when Allah will ask them and they were the صادقين the genuine ones فكيف بالكاذبين من أمثالنا then what will be our condition where we are كاذب we are fake we are not genuine what answer will we give Allah سبحانه وتعالى on the day of قيامة Am I genuine or fake? As Ali radiallahu anhu you say, what's the sign that you genuine or you fake? Yaksal idha kana wahda. When you are alone, then you are lazy. Wa yanshatu idha kana ma'an nas. But you are vibrant, you are keen, you are energetic. When you are with people, wa yazidu fil amal idha madahuhu. When people praise you, then you increase your amal. When the shabash, the wah wah comes, then we increase our ibadat. Kama yan qusu minhu idha dhammu. But when people rebuke us and they find fault with us, then we leave deen. We leave amal. We should not be like that. Al-mukhlisu may. A sincere person is the one who hides his good actions like how he hides his evil. As Ibrahim Taimi used to say, a sincere person, a sign that a person has found Allah is that he hides his good actions like how he hides his evil actions. We don't want anybody to see our bad things. We don't want to be disgraced in public. Do I want to be disgraced on the day of Qiyamah in front of the entire creation, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We need to check, was this another Ramadan? Was this just another Eid, another day in our lives that's going to continue? Or it is the month, are these days of revolution and resolution? We need to take it seriously. We need to put our affairs in order. Otherwise, shaitan and nafs are there to take us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We've been feeding this nafs all the time. We need to feed the roof. Amona said, Khan sallallahu you say, a visitor came to visit you. Normally the horse goes in the stables. The house is for the guest. We feed the guest the best food. And the horse is in the stables. He said, we've inverted it. We are now giving the horse the best food. And the traveler is starving. After seven days, he's so weak, he cannot even mount his horse. We put him on the horse. Now he has to follow the direction of the horse. The horse takes him to Jahannam and destruction. He's got no power to control it. He said, we've fed our enough so much that now we don't have control over this nafs. We want to pull this nafs to Jannah, but it's not going to Jannah because we fed it so much. These were ayam to feed the ruh. So it steers us when we pull it in the direction of Jannah. We go to Jannah as well. Somebody told some people that if the doctor had told you that you have one month to love, what would you have done? The first person said, I'll put my affairs in order. I will repeat. I will undo all the damages. I will do damage control. I will make Tawbah and Il Istighfar. I will sort out my will and my estate. I will ask forgiveness for whoever I've harmed. I will lead a pious religious life and prepare for Akhirat, prepare for death. The second person was asked, he said, I will sell all my assets, whatever money I have. I will spend it last month of my life, enjoying life as much as I can. Somebody asked the last person, what would you do? He said, if the doctor told me I had one month to love, I'll get another doctor, I'll get a second opinion. What angle am I looking at life? Look from outside. If my hisab had to be done, I today will account for my own akhirat. And if I had to account, every person knows their own self. Where will I be resurrected on a day of Qiyamah? What Anbiya and Sahaba or not? That's the question we have to be asking ourselves and not feeding this nafs and shaitan. The nafs is such 
it is unpredictable. It will trap us. There was a newly wed couple on the first morning when the when they wake up, the bride wakes up shocked and baffled. She sees a husband standing in front of her and around her a seven course meal with eggs and tea and toast. She's baffled and the husband says, what do you think my dear, my darling? She said, what a surprise. I have no words. I cannot express my elation and joy. The husband replies, this is how I want it every day. This is how I want it every day. Does nafs, we can never get it right. Tell the qabr wa'abud rabbaka hatta ya'atiyaka al-yaqeen. Tell our last breath, we need to be making effort. Likewise, shaitan, we cannot predict shaitan. Till the end, he will try to take us to Jahannam. He was a youngster and he wanted to get married. And this young, beautiful girl that he had met, he decides to propose to her and he tells her, I think so, we should get married. So she says, give me time to think about it. He says, remember, well, my father's 103 years old and I stand to inherit a substantial fortune, a substantial empire. I want you to be with me in that. So let's get married soon. Let's not delay it. Two weeks later, he gets the news that that same girl is his stepmother. We cannot put shaitan past anything. He's there out to destroy us. Let this be a Ramadan where we destroy shaitan. The amal that we should be engaged, especially at the end of this uh, amal, is istighfar. Tawbah liman wajda fi sahifatihi istighfaran kathira. Fortunate is the person who finds his book of deeds with a lot of istighfar. وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ لَوْ لَمْ تُذْنِبُوا If you had not committed errors and sin, لَذَهَبَ اللَّهُ بِكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have remo removed you وَلَجَاءَ بِقَوْمٍ يُذْنِبُونَ Allah would have brought another nation فَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ اللَّهُ فَيَغْفِرُوا لَهُمْ They would have sought, they would have cried, they would have backed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have forgiven them. Let us try to be particular about the sunnah. Although there is lockdown, all the sunnah that are mentioned, let us try to make amal of it. Even if it is in our house, for example, to go on a different route, if we have to go outside from one way, enter from the front door, come out another way. Every sunnah is important. Sunnah is the actual criteria for salvation in dunya and akhirah. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين